So today I'm joined by such an amazing woman. She's a beautiful friend of mine and actually a massive inspiration to me. When I first met this woman, I was actually blown away and even kind of like like taken aback by how intelligent, driven, focused, powerful and just like unapologetically herself this woman is and actually I'm kind of saying this for the first time in front of you Julia um you have influenced me and inspired me and changed me for the better in so many ways I see myself being more organized, having more of a strategy, not being scared of certain areas of my business that I was scared of before, thanks to you. So without further ado, I want to introduce to my audience, the amazing Julia Guerreri. Hey, Julia. Lucy, I'm like, don't make me cry. We're just getting started. (laughs) Oh, it can be emotional. It probably will be. (laughs) Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. So Julia, for those of you who don't know you, actually, we've done some collaborations before. So you're not a total stranger to my audience. But for those of you who are hearing about Julia for the first time, Julia is a mindset coach. She is a content creator. And she's also a powerful and mega successful entrepreneur. She's the whole package. And we became friends, didn't we? A couple of years ago, I think it was 2020. 2021 when we were both just deep in the game of creating content and seeing where it would take us and we had no idea that it would take us to where we are today right absolutely that was such an interesting time looking back on it like there was just so much opportunity it was like just so exciting it was so playful it was so fun and I'm grateful that we met in those earlier stages of both of our journeys as well absolutely but why don't you throw it back a little bit further because I know that your journey has been such an incredible and inspiring one and it's definitely going to inspire some listeners today. Thank you. So my journey really started when I found out I was $25,000 in student debt from college and I had just graduated and I found out as soon as I graduated and I was just getting started working my first job on Wall Street and I was only making like $300 a week at that time, because I was only working part-time, that was like early 2020. And then the pandemic hit. And I looked at it as a massive opportunity to try to pay down this debt because I knew that I wanted more out of my life, but I felt really held back. Now looking back, honestly, energetically, where I was like, I can't move forward until I really clear this thing up. So I resold my clothes on Poshmark. I flipped things around the neighborhood that I could find and I I paid it off within six months. And that was really like my first ever big manifestation. And one of those manifestations where it's like, yes, I worked for it, but I was also so in the right mindset and headspace to make that happen from someone being in debt to paying that off in six months. It's kind of like, whoa, how did you do that? And now- Fast forward two years, having this massively large community of over 180,000 people doing online courses, teaching and coaching and mentoring. I'm launching a mastermind next year. It's like doing all these things going from two years ago, 25K in debt to multiple six figures in my own business in two years. It's like, what? Like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like a quantum leap. And it's just, my podcast is called Break Out of the Matrix. You were just on my show. Like, that's what my brand is about is like breaking out of that matrix, breaking out of that conditioning and no longer living in the rat race and like really creating your dream life. Absolutely. You are a living, breathing example of what's possible. So let's go back to that six month period from when you discovered you were in that level of debt to clearing that debt, to paying it off, to being debt free. So as you said, you got to work with side hustles or, you know, anything that you could, Poshmark, flipping things. 
And that might be super inspiring to a lot of people where maybe maybe they're in a full-time job right now and maybe having that extra bit of money can actually be life-changing. It could be the difference between being in debt or not being in debt or having this car or having a car that's comfortable for the whole family or not struggling with paying the bills. So I'm sure there's lots of people who would love to not just start a side hustle, but have one that actually works. Because it's one thing setting up anything like a Poshmark or an online business. And then it's another thing actually having the energy flow through it and the money flow through it. If you could pinpoint it, because you said it was down to energetics and mindset. What do you think it was that got these things to work for you? I'm so happy you're asking this because I think when you move so far past those moments, it's hard to bring yourself back. And it's hard to support people in those moments because it feels like forever ago. And now the problems that I face are much bigger. I always say your problems just get bigger and better. So (laughs) just to kind of preface this a little bit, (laughs) I know, right? It's like, oh, you know, I don't have that problem. And now I have this problem. And it's like, entrepreneurs are professional problem solvers, I say all the time. Yeah. So just want to preface that is that's exactly why I'm launching a free community to connect people who are at those early stages because, and something I don't share about enough, which I definitely need to, I got all of these ideas for side hustles from consuming free educational content on social media. Mm. That was when I was like really in my consuming phase. I was consuming spiritual content in the form of books and like ancient teachings. And then on the other hand, religiously watching Gary V talk about side hustles, like joining his live streams, like just so consuming the right content. So that's really important. And that's why I'm launching this free community to bring content to people at every level, because I think as creators grow bigger, we get more niche and we only are helping a certain kind of people. And it's like, I want to expand and help everybody at every level. And the way that I see myself doing that is through the free community. So Mm -hmm. just to kind of give you an idea of where my head was at was when I was doing that, like, you know, it's like I was working my full-time job during the day. And then I would come home and I remember it was a three hour commute from my mom's house, which is where I was living pre pandemic. And It was like a three hour commute. I was doing it for like about a month and a half before the pandemic hit. And that hour in the morning and that hour at night commuting. So yeah, it was like two hours and then it was like a 30 minute walk there and back. So it's like that hour on the train, I was posting on Poshmark. I was doing the Poshmark on my lunch breaks. I was doing Poshmark. So it's like, for me, it worked really well because I was like, how can I make money without investing any money? And it's like, okay, everybody has clothes in their closet they don't wear. So it's like, how can you be resourceful with what you have? So it's like in the inspired action phase, it's about how can I make money without having to spend money, right? So in the beginning of your journey, you trade your time for money. And then as you get bigger and you grow, you trade your money for time. So it's like in the beginning, it was how can I trade my time for money in the most efficient way possible? So I was doing that. And a lot of people come to me and they're like, I post my clothes on Poshmark. It doesn't work. And I'm like, are you active? Are you treating it like a business? So it's like, I always had these like entrepreneur tendencies, I guess. So it's like, I wouldn't just post and ghost. Like I wouldn't just post something on Poshmark and never go to it again. It's like, I would post it. I would share it. I made an Instagram account for my Poshmark page. I was like, let me market it. Like I went hard and it's like, you have to be so committed to everything that you do because the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. Mm, Such a good point. And I think what you're talking about there, you know, how you were saying that there were other people saying, oh, I tried Poshmark and it didn't work. I hear that so often with um, people who try all sorts of extra things on the side or entrepreneurial or business ventures. So I often think that a certain mindset is required or often people underestimate what it's going to take. I remember this great analogy of a rocket ship. And I heard that 
the rocket uses the majority of its fuel and its engine for takeoff. Then mm. once it's in outer space, it's just gliding with the momentum and there's no not as much friction and stuff where it's that first getting that enormous rocket from being still on the ground to flying upwards. That's what requires the most energy and that's what requires the most fuel. So like, what do you have to say about the amount of commitment, effort, action required to really get something from being just a dream. Absolutely. And what keeps coming up for me as you're speaking is my like mantra in my business. And I should probably put this in my bio or something, but like, I really feel like I turn dreamers into doers. Like I really prioritize breaking down those big dreams and turning them into micro action steps. Because I think a lot of people in the mindset, in the manifesting, in the spiritual niche can get really caught up in the mindset stuff and say, well, it's not working for me. And I love your analogy about the rocket because this is actually what has inspired me to change my whole business model away from six-week courses that it's like, you have to do everything in six weeks. No. So the way that I'm changing my business, and this goes off of what your question is, is like my courses, even though they're going to be a six week course, you have access for life because you're building a business for a lifetime. You're not Mm -hmm. expected to build the whole business in six weeks. And this is also why in my programs, I ask for so much feedback from my clients. I'm like, if you don't tell me what's not working, what you don't like, or what you like, I won't know. Because what I think versus what the person who's actually buying the product or actually using it could be very different. Like, let's make sure we're on the same page here. So it's like the way that I look at it now And this is also why I'm launching a mastermind is because I've seen that long-term commitment is what helps me grow. Because when we put this pressure that we have to achieve all of our dreams in six weeks, all of our dreams in three months, you're not going to do anything because you're going to say, I'm falling behind. You know, I'm not working hard enough. I'm too busy everyone's busy, right? Everyone has their own lives. And it's like, this is why you have to be in this for a lifetime. And this is why a lot of the creators that we saw in 2020 are slowly fading out. And especially with what's going on in the world now and, you know, talks of the recession and things like that. If you're not so driven in your heart and leading your business with heart and authenticity and integrity, maybe you'll last three years, maybe you'll last five years, but I don't see those businesses lasting for 20 years, right? It's like, I'm slowly even seeing the people I used to look up to in 2020 and 2019 before I was even a creator. And it's like, where are they now? And it just goes to show that the mindset the mental strength and the integrity and the authenticity that you bring to your brand is always what's going to win. And it's like the people that aren't in it for those reasons will not be here in five or 10 years. Having that commitment for the long term, not just being in it for the quick fix, riding the waves, not just of growth, but like, for example, for me as a content creator, Everything was easy in 2020. Not only did we have much more time and fewer distractions, but it was easier to grow quickly online because TikTok was new. Everyone was on their phones for more hours a day. So you got more views and more followers by doing essentially less, but you also had time to do more. And then now there's seasons. There's different seasons in content creation and in all businesses, even if it has nothing to do with social media. And I completely know what you mean. Those those winters in business, there's spring, summers, autumns and winters in business. And I guess it's not due to people being, you know, uncommitted. It might just be that these things don't get taught in schools. When do we get taught in school that to really achieve something worth having, especially if we're looking at business, you've got to be able to weather all the seasons. I mean, these kinds of life skills, I don't think really get taught, you know, unless you're fortunate enough to hear it from parents or from a mentor. 
if shit hits the fan and things start to unfold or numbers start to go down instead of up, there's a lot of, a lot of people jump ship at that point. This is so important for us to be talking about because I love what you said, like 2020 was easy to grow your brand. It's like coming back to your question before I really look at business in years, right? I don't talk about, oh, what did I do this week? What did I do this month? It's like, what am I doing this year? Extending your time horizons, looking at it for the long term. And people also have to understand, like, what stage of business are you in? So it's like yeah. from 2020 to 2022, which I'm still in this stage, but it's like, was all about building. So it was all about building. So I built a community before I started selling anything. Now I'm in the stage of scaling, right? So I'm still building, but now I have products and services. So I'll have a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, you know, well, you have all these followers, you have all these things. And it's like, because I spent years building that, that now my social media is very passive. I'm not trying to build thousands and thousands of followers because I already have that community. Now it's about turning that community into a business, right? Turning and nurturing those people saying, how can I help them beyond the free content? And it's like, people have to understand that everyone's at a different stage. So you may be at the building stage where someone else may be at the passive stage. And then you see the people promoting courses on passive income, but they're not talking about the four years they spent building their community. Mm -hmm. So of course they're going to make passive income because they were already in the building stages. Now now they're in the passive stage. So it's like, I used to buy these courses thinking after having a community of six months, I was going to have passive income on autopilot. And it's just not true. It takes time. And sometimes that's the only thing you need is more time in the game. Mm. So what would you say to someone? Cause I'm just trying to think of, you know, there's all sorts of people listening to this. There might be people who haven't yet started that business. And maybe they're hearing us talk about how 2020 was the time when it was easy, <laughs> you know, and now it's not so easy and there's a recession and everything. So what would you say to someone who maybe wants to start and either that's what's concerning them or, you know, we've been talking a lot about having the commitment to take actions daily or c at least consistently enough to get results. And, you know, I know that I have, uh, I'm still working on building a trust relationship with myself to mm -hmm. trust myself enough to not let myself down. If somebody identifies as being someone who can't stick to something, is that just, you know, that's just the way that they are? Or are there ways that someone could change from being someone who's maybe never been able to finish or complete something and maybe thinks, well, I won't even bother starting if it's going to require this long game. Like what mm -hmm. advice would you have for them so that they could achieve what they want to achieve as well? Absolutely. I really think it comes back to the relationship to self and the trust that you have with yourself, because people listening may be like, oh, you know, she's so committed or she's done this for so long. But I have my areas of life where I lack trust with myself. So what we had talked about in my podcast was working out. So it's like my relationship with going to the gym or going for a walk and exercising and eating healthy. I lack that trust with myself. And that's something that I'm still building and that's taking me time. So it's like, mm -hmm. you have to one, trust your timeline. And two, you have to get to the root of it. Why don't you trust yourself to commit? Why do you give up on yourself before you even start? And that's when it comes to that like belief where it comes to those inner belief systems. And that's where I tie in the spiritual inner work to entrepreneurship because too many entrepreneurs are living on autopilot. And it's like, what I really see is a lot of entrepreneurs too much in the masculine energy and not enough in the feminine spiritual embodiment and getting super ultra burnt out, having that lack of trust that when things change, right? Like the social media landscape is changing. Views aren't being handed out anymore like they used to be but my business is doing better than ever. So why? Because I was never 
dependent on a platform. I was dependent on who I am as a coach, as a mentor, as an entrepreneur. And it was always about the relationship with myself and the relationship with my clients. It was never just about social media platforms. And that's where people have it wrong that they think their business is an Instagram account, a YouTube account. It's not. Your business is you and the products and services you choose to sell. Totally. It's you behind the scenes. It's you in your home office. It's you getting up every day and handling curveballs you may get or new challenges or new problems to solve. So is there a method that you would recommend for someone who wants to build that new belief, that new trust in themselves that they, maybe they've had, they're looking back and they're like, well, I have started and failed everything in my life. How can I suddenly you know, looking at my proof, my evidence of the kind of person that I'm like, how do I know that I'm not just going to start something else and not finish it? How do you break yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it goes through creating new micro habits. So like for me, when I want to build a new habit, it's always with some sort of routine. So it's like finding a routine that works for you. So maybe it's in business, right? You want to build a new habit. What's one small micro step that you can commit to every single day? Because the thing about habits is it's about repetition. And I think too many people are trying to get it perfect. And that's why they're not doing enough reps. So it's like, right, if you go to the gym and you just did one rep of a bicep curl, or you did 10 messy reps, the next time you would be better if you did 10 opposed to one and trying to perfect the one. Now -hmm. that's the same with your habits. So for me, for example, right? Like I think of my content, right? We were talking before, we're talking offline about the new content system that I'm implementing. And for me, I could have waited these past three months to perfect the type of short form content I wanna create. Or I could have put out 30, 40, I probably even 50 videos, which is what I did to now have that conversation with my team and be like, this is the exact type of content I want to put out. But if I kept thinking about it, like I did from January to September of this year, and I waited to hire, I waited to do all these things because I kept coming up with the perfect plan in my mind. And then I kept changing it and overthinking and It was only in September when I started taking messy action every single day that I'm now at the point in my content just this week, I messaged them and I was like, this is the kind of edits I want to do. This is the kind of thing I want to do. I perfected it and I'm going to teach you how to do it. And it's still going to change. But for now, that's what feels good because I kept taking messy action. So for anyone who wants to try something new, just try it because the way that you perform it is going to be so different than the way that you think about it. Because I had thought up this content strategy for months and then I finally put it on paper. And then once it was on paper, I kept talking about it. I kept showing people. And then I was like, I got to just do it. And Mm -hmm. through doing it, through getting over that cringe phase is what I call it, is now that I'm at this phase where I'm like, oh my God, like my video is going out next week. I'm so excited for it because I love them so much. Wow. This is so valuable because I feel like through your answers, we're getting an insight into how your mind works. And you are such a true example of a successful entrepreneur. And it's, again, like I just keep saying that if, things to do with business it doesn't get taught at school or maybe you can study business studies but there's nothing more valuable than Mm. seeing the cogs turn and picking an entrepreneur's brain and seeing ah that's how they look at this situation you know I, I I've met people before who've said like oh yes you know I'm planning my content and I've created 90 days of content and they haven't posted anything yet and it's like (laughs) why bother creating day 90 when you haven't experienced and seen how your first 30 days of content is received and is gonna evolve you know so yeah less so true thinking and planning as much as it's good to be organized doing and figuring it out as you go is definitely the best way as an entrepreneur right 
Oh yeah. And it's like when people ask me, right. I think people come to me at first thinking I have some like secret crystal ball strategy and I'm hiding (laughs) it. And I'm like, no, like the strategy is showing up and being myself. Like that's the strategy with all the ups and downs. And it's like, I've taken on a lot of one-on-one work, um, these past few months because I've been moving into this pivot away from just just manifesting into the more tactical inspired action piece. And it's like, I found that when I was just in the manifesting world, that so many people were coming to me and didn't want to take any action. And I was getting like so frustrated because social Mm -hmm. media is a highlight reel. And it's like, the word manifesting and manifestation is so thrown out there. And it almost got me disconnected from my practices and my beliefs a little bit because people wanted a quick fix. And I was like, well, then I'm not your person. Like, I don't want you to buy my course and be unhappy when you don't see results in 24 hours. Because if you're looking for that, you can go invest in someone else's course and then be let down by them. I don't want that responsibility because that's not what I promote. Like I'm in this for the long haul. All of my clients are in this for the long haul. Like we're just wrapping up on my three month program that I launch. I only launch it every few times a year. And like the results that my clients have received, I could have never put that in the copy on the sales page. Like, it's just such expansion that I I can't even explain it. Like one of my clients, for example, she just launched her podcast and she's like, I've had this idea for years and she actually moved it into action. So it's like, that's really my secret sauce is like turning those dreams into action through healing your relationship to self, right? The feminine energy backed by the masculine strategy. Hmm. I was actually just going to ask you about that because I saw some testimonials on your Instagram of some wild success stories. Like there was one client of yours who I think she was in real estate or something and she ended up, you could say manifesting commissions that were so much bigger than she'd ever received before. So as you said, like it's beyond comprehension of how these kind of shifts have happened. But if you could reverse engineer what changed for her and what you did to help her, like what would you put that down to? I love that question. So this was my client, Sam. We have a full interview on my uh, on an Instagram live, I think, or on my website. But Sam started with me. And it's actually funny because she's a personal friend as well. So when she invested into my course, I was like, whoa, this is so cool to like see my friends like supporting me on that level. So she had invested into my course. And when she invested, she was making like inconsistent three to 5K months in her business as a realtor. And, you know, in that situation, you probably think I need to go to a real estate expert, right? Because this is how I used to think. And I got me into a lot of trouble because I would go to these business experts without having that internal foundation, without having that trust, that relationship to self. And I spent a lot of money and time wasted, right? So it's like, she had come to me and she's like, I want to make three to five. uh, No, she said, I want to make consistent 8K months. So she was having inconsistent three to five. She's like, if I could just have consistent 8K months, I'd be over the moon excited. Like that would be perfect. She came to me, right? You would think I'm going to tell her, do this strategically in your business. Our whole work together was healing her identity. It was all identity work. It was, who are you? Who is the version of you that has the consistent 8K months, right? What are you doing with your time? So something specific with her, she was not spending her time efficiently work-wise, because she lacked that trust with herself in terms of her business. So it's like you go thinking it's something wrong with your business, but what about if you get to the root, right? You holistically heal the identity showing up as the successful CEO, showing up as the successful entrepreneur. And she knew the right actions to take when she healed those parts of herself. And within a month, she manifested a $70,000 commission check. 
forget about 8k 8K, right (laughs) oh 8k what Seventy thousand in a month I mean that is that's quantum that is a completely different level that's like annual income for her in a month she had just left her marketing job the year before making somewhere between like 30 to 50 a year wow So please let's dive a little bit deeper into this concept of healing yourself or healing the relationship with yourself. Like, what does that look like? Is there a process? Is there something that people can do? Because I think that's probably more of a common reason why people are stuck or struggling than any other. Yeah. So all of my teachings are a very simple framework, framework, unlearn, relearn and implement three steps, right? Unlearn the old way, the junk that's keeping you stuck. And when I say junk, I'm talking like thousands of years of generational junk that is holding you back. Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Like what are your beliefs around money? So something for me that I really walked myself through these past few years is realizing that coming from immigrant parents, I had so many limiting beliefs around money. Like you have to sacrifice to make money. You have to work hard. Money doesn't grow on trees, right? That really scares stuff to a point where it's like, I would be shopping at Whole Foods. I would have a $20,000 month and I would be shopping at Whole Foods and the bill was $70 and I'm like having a panic attack. And I'm like, what's going on, right? You get curious. Don't judge yourself. So I could have been like, what's wrong with you, Julia? You had a 20K month and you're freaking out about $70. And it's like, no, get curious. Where is this coming from? Why do you feel this way? You are safe. So for me, it was a big fear that I wasn't safe, that I w- everything was going to combust. It's like the more money I was making, I was actually feeling worse. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Like, if you look at the numbers, I am safe. I have an abundance of money. I could do so many amazing things. Why do I feel this way? And it's like, it was never about the money. It was about the feeling of safety. So unlearning, clearing that shit. How do you clear that shift? Shit, journaling, meditation, being around high level people, investing in masterminds. So I invested $22,000 into a mastermind in July. I just invested another $20,000 a couple of weeks ago. It's over $40,000 to help me heal these money beliefs. Right. And it's like, when I, all right, I just shared with you guys, I was 25K in debt two years ago. And now I just paid 20K in full two weeks ago for a mastermind. That's the healing right? Like that's the quantum expansion showing up and showing your mind that it's your mind. It's not true, right? It's like those limiting beliefs, that's your mind playing tricks on you. That's not truth. Then you go into relearning, surrounding yourself with people, mentors. So it's like, you're not going to learn this stuff in school. Yes, you can learn this stuff from books and courses. And that's like that DIY approach, How can you put yourself in front of people who have done the thing that you want to do and learn from them, pick their brain, learn the ins and outs, learn behind the scenes, become a student of life, and then implement. What did I like from this program? What did I not like about what this person does? Really making it your own, because another way that I had made mistakes before is thinking that people's courses and programs was like the holy grail. And I didn't have to put my personal touch. I could just use their blueprint and I'd have the same business as them and I couldn't have been more wrong. Mm. So it's like, how can you now take what you've learned through those initial identity phases and then implement that? to build your dream life, to build the business, to create something for yourself, because the how-to is the easy part. Yeah, It's the belief that you are worthy and you are able to do these things that everyone gets stuck on. And that's why they're not moving their dreams into action. And just a personal example that happened for me is I've had this idea about launching a mastermind for like years Like, I've always wanted to do this. I always want to be a part of masterminds. Like, I've always been so lit up about the whole mastermind idea. And then 
when I just invested $20,000 into the mastermind that I joined for 2023 for the whole year, the coach was like, why haven't you launched yours yet? Cause we were on like a discovery call. And I was like, I don't know. Am I ready for that? And she was like, Julia, you have a wait list of one-on-one clients. Like, of course you're ready for that. And it just clicked for me in that moment that I just spent $40,000 plus on my own personal growth masterminds just this year in investments. Why wouldn't I be ready? So I started having some conversations with like my best clients, people in my network that I'm like, do you think this is a good idea? Is this something you'd be interested in joining? Two people signed up and I sold out two spots in like 48 hours. Amazing. So it's it like was already there. It was just exactly. needing someone, a mentor to show you, hey, you're ready. Exactly. And it's like, yeah, it's like, you know what? And it's like, what's so cool about my business is that since it's so built on relationships and authenticity and integrity, integrity, there was no sales page. There was no fancy copy. There was no funnel. It was me messaging people saying, hey, does this sound interesting? The person asking some questions, I answer them. And then they say, sign me up. Let's do life together. (laughs) And that's the best business model, the magical one. Yeah, totally. So it sounds like, and I can definitely relate to this, that there's layers and layers of healing. You know, like you healed your money mindset and your relationship or your identity with yourself enough to change your money from being 25K in debt to clearing that debt. And then again, to making 20K months, but then there was still more healing to be done, which you discovered when you were at the checkout for $70. And then there's more always to unfold, but it sounds like breakthrough after breakthrough, you're releasing yourself from those as you say, it literally can be, and it's most likely for most people, thousands of years of generational beliefs that get passed down and passed down and passed down and passed down. So you mentioned you kind of um, put into words or put into phrases what some of those limiting beliefs sounded like that you inherited. Can you put into words some of the new beliefs so that people can kind of get a feel for the alternative, like the other way that they could think about themselves or money or how money can be made or how much money they're worth or worthy of making. Yeah. So one of my favorite affirmations that a friend actually shared with me that I love, and I'm looking at it on my new vision board as well, it's making money is in my DNA. And Mm -hmm. I love that because it's like, This is the way that I think about it. There is so much abundance in this world, money, food, resources, nature, all of the things. There's so much abundance. Your spiritual team on the other side is rooting for you. Everybody wants you to have an abundance of money on the other side. They want this for you. So it comes back to that feeling of safety and reminding yourself, I am safe. There is an abundance of money floating in my vortex, in my energetic field, Right. And I remember, you know, I just had signed on a client, $10,000 paid in full, no questions asked, just where's the link? I'm ready to put my card in. And a few days before, some of those scarce limiting beliefs were coming up. And I asked myself, where is this coming from, Julia? Who is this talking? This isn't your highest self. Who is this? Like making it just playful and like fun. And it's like, Why do you feel that way? Your spiritual team on the other side is rooting for you. There's thousands of dollars. I said this to myself. There's thousands of dollars floating in my vortex right now, waiting to pour into me. You actually share with me, Lucy, the Abraham Hicks rampage. I listen to that on repeat when those scarce limiting beliefs come up. So making your toolkit, what can you do when you feel these feelings I listened to the rampage. I got curious. I sat in silence with those fears. And I said, it's okay, right? Like holding yourself saying Mm. you are safe. It's like your inner child. Like you just want to hug her and you want to just hold her and be like, you are okay. You are safe. Like I have your back. The spiritual team has your back. You have friends and family who love you. Right. And then 
calming your nervous system down and reminding yourself of these things. And then, right, on the other hand, just being like, it's all going to be okay. Making money is in my DNA. There's an abundance of money floating in my vortex. It's on its way to me right now, right? It's like that TikTok, be delusional. Like, it's like you have to trick your mind to train your brain to think like this. You're not born thinking like this, unfortunately. You are when you're first born, but then you get those conditioned beliefs so fast from your environment, from the generations before you. It's no one to blame. It's just the way most of the world is. So it's like you have to retrain yourself to walk yourself through those hard moments. And then two days later, I get $20,000 in revenue for my business, $10,000 client paid in full, $18,000 cash week. It's like unreal that all you had to do was walk yourself through those hard moments, not run away from that. Yes. Oh my God. What a gem. That is life-changing stuff. That's the juice. That's the source of walking yourself through things to be there for yourself and guide yourself away from those spirals of thoughts into a place where you can feel and unlock the identity that you can truly have. Oh my gosh, Julia, thank you so much for sharing that. That helped me so much. And I know it's going to help so many other people too. Thank you, Lucy. Wow. Unbelievable. So you mentioned earlier that you are launching this free community. What's it called? The Conscious Creator Club, right? When Mm -hmm. does that launch? When does it go live? So by the time this is out, it'll probably be live. Um, It's already all set up. So I will definitely send you a link for the show notes. I'm sure it will be live by the time that this comes out. And I'm so excited because this is something that I've wanted for a while because, and I'm sure you can relate to this, it's like, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on YouTube. And it's like, I just want a place where I can just talk to everybody, where I can just talk to my community, unscripted, unedited, unfiltered. Like, I just want to talk to my people. I want somewhere to go when I want to connect with my people. And it's like, that's why I love my email list as well. But it's like, email still email. It's like, I want a really personal approach, connect, connection. I want the community to talk to each other. Like you, and I'm sure you can relate to this because you and your business, you said on my podcast as well, community and being in Mm. the room with people who are positive and uplifting and going to make you be better is what changed my life. So it's Mm -hmm. like, I want to provide this for free for my people, for my community. So it's called the Conscious Creator Club. It'll be live by the time you guys are listening to this and there's free courses in there. There's like some gamification. So if you're super active, you can win like a free call with me, like just so many fun things. And I'm so excited to share it. Oh, that's going to bring so much value to so many people. And so I'll make sure that that is linked in the show notes and all of your details as well. And what's your Instagram, your social media name so that people can find you? So everyone can find me at I am Julia Guerreri and my name is spelled with a G. So if you could just write I A M G I U L I A Guerreri, you'll link it in the show notes. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, just just click the link or when I meet people in public, I'm like, I'm like, I'll just type it for you. (laughs) Yeah. I can relate. Amazing. (laughs) Julia, thank you for bringing so much value to the podcast today. I feel like you've filled up my cup and I'm sure that so many people listening enjoyed it too. And if you did enjoy this episode, go and drop Julia a message, screenshot this podcast, whack it on your Instagram story and tag both of us so that we can see it. We can celebrate you and we can connect with you on a deeper level. Julia, thank you so much once again. I love you, my friend. I can't wait to see you again soon. I can't wait to go to New York and visit you. And next time you're over in Europe, hit me up. Anyway, thank you, my darling. Thank you, Lucy.